changes. And so the risk associated with higher glucose changes with age. So the effect is modified. And in this case, it's negative. So as you get older, uh, glucose has less of an effect on your risk of diabetes. Okay, so that's an effect modifier. So we've got a couple of things here. We've got adding in a variable and adding in um, an interaction term. And all of this time, and as we added in that interaction term, again, statistically significant. Again, the residual deviance and the AIC went down. So happy to keep that in the model for now. Okay. Notice I said for now, because that might change as we go along. We, so the idea about building the model now, we've asked a few questions and in previous videos, we've said you need to consider um, the problem of confounding. So if there is a variable that you think is a confounder, in other words, it, uh, and I don't want to redefine what confounding is now, but you want to include variables that are confounders because it, you know, the model will control for the confounding. Um, you want to include effect modifiers because it's going to give you a clearer a sense of the actual relationship between predictive variables and the outcome variables, in this case, diabetes. You want to think about collinearity. So if there's very closely correlated variables, anything with a correlation coefficient of 0.7 and more, uh, you may have a problem because they might sort of be explaining themselves away and so in, there could be like a circular logic in the model. You don't want highly correlated variables. So you need to think about these things before you start building the model. And one of the things that we said is even before you start building the model, just check the correlation coefficients of all of your variables against each other. So these are pair wide correlation coefficients and all of these are low. So we're happy to move forward and start building the model. How do we start building the model? Well, we do it iteratively. Some people start with all the variables and then take them away one at a time until you get to a point where taking away an additional variable doesn't, you know, has no effect. I like to do it the other way, which is start, start with, and in this case, you know, because we're talking about diabetes, we start with glucose because it's the most obvious thing to think about when you're talking about diabetes risk, and then iteratively add in a variable at a time and you could with each variable also do a univariate analysis and look at that variable's relationship with diabetes add in variables add in iteratively so one at a time put them in take them out see what happens a variable and the variable and its interaction terms and you want to see what interacts with what and slowly but carefully build up a model that is the smallest and tightest possible model that you can for that represents a good fit for your data. Okay, and literally this is what I do here. I've, I just sort of say, look, let's look at, firstly, as we add a variable, is it statistically significant? Answer, if it's yes, then let's move on and ask, 